Well, good morning, everyone. We're so glad that you guys came out today on this awesome Sunday morning for, in our opinion, best Sunday of the year, Youth Sunday, where everyone around here, all the youth group kids, just come out and just basically take over the church for a week. Uh, can we just give one more round of applause for the speakers, the greeters, everyone who was part of this? Uh, now, you may be looking at me and sizing me up and thinking, wait a minute, I'm, I'm no dummy here. This doesn't look like Jordan Hilke. And you're right, I am not the youth pastor. I'm not Jordan Hilke. We're about the same height, but other than that, we're pretty pretty different here. Um, Jordan, like John was saying, got the, uh, we got the text last night that Holly was going into labor. How selfish of them. I know they skipped out on Youth Sunday. I couldn't believe it either. Um, but <laughs> they went into that, so uh, hopefully I represent Jordan well, and uh, that uh, I kind of represent this whole youth group and what's going on. So my name is Stephen Nichols. Um, I'm, I'm uh, and one of the other thoughts that may be going through your head as I kind of talk now is, okay, he's not the youth pastor, he's not Jordan, uh, but why on earth would they allow some 13-year-old kid to come in and take place for the youth pastor? And I, I can assure you, I'm not 13. I'm actually 22 years old. I'm married to my uh, wife, Mariah. Uh, she actually sings on the worship team every once in a while. And I'm one of the very many youth leaders that uh, uh, helps out around Wednesday nights and some of the activities that we do alongside Jordan. Not 13 years old. <laughs> So you may be looking at this, and maybe you're new here, maybe you've uh, been here for a few years and you're pretty involved, but you may be looking at everyone that's uh, uh, been up here speaking, greeting, or leading worship and thinking, what's this all really about? What's this all about with having Youth Sunday or Second Student Ministries and what we do on a Wednesday night? What is it about? Is, is a Wednesday night really just a glorified babysitting program where, where parents can get rid of their kids for a night or just somewhere where they can go and send their kids so they can get some good values and know where they are and know that they're safe and they'll be home by 9 o'clock? Is that all that it really is? Is this all that we do at Second Student Ministries? And I think the answer to that question is actually in the theme for Youth Sunday. It's anchored. Anchored. You see, our goal is not just to, to, to take care of kids just for a night. Our goal and our, what we tr try to do is lead these students, lead these, guys, these people into a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ where they are so founded in the personal work of Jesus Christ that their life is anchored into something so solid that when, when life calls, when struggles come, that they are immovable because, is that a word? They are unmovable because of the strength of Jesus that they have inside of them. We want them to be so deeply rooted in his love, grace, and truth that when life comes at them, they are secure in the love of God. Matthew 7, 24 through 25, my, my uh, Cameron over here already read this for us. So I'll read it again. Therefore, everyone who hears the words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and, and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. You know, so too many times we hear the stories, maybe you've heard them before, of the Christian perfect kid. Picture perfect. You know, the student you put up on a, a model, a pedestal, and you look at this kid, grew up in a Christian home their entire life, knew all the good Bible answers, went to Sunday school, a leader in the church, led Bible studies inside the school, outside of church, and then all of a sudden they graduate high school, they leave the youth group, and then they're going to college, and their whole life shifts. Their whole life shifts. They they that don't line up with what, how they've been raised or what they've been taught. They're making decisions that are not good for their future and for their well-being. And then not only that, they're rejecting faith, God, and church altogether. We see that too many times, and, and we think, well, how did that happen? They were the model student. This was the, the person that we all wanted our children to kind of model after. How did that happen? And I think the reason is that we've kind of thought of here is this, it's, it's because their foundation never actually was in the grace of Jesus Christ. We find that their, their foundation is actually in the approval of others. So when they're in this environment of churchgoers and church people, that's all they're seeking for. They're seeking for the approval of others. And that's what they're doing. And that's what they're getting out of them. And then when they leave school and leave the house, nothing's actually changed. They're just seeking the approval of another environment and another group of people. We want our students to be so deeply rooted in the grace of Jesus Christ that when they leave, they're going to be so, uh, standing so strong in that truth of Jesus that nothing will change no matter what comes up against them. However, it would be, it'd be naive to think that all we're concerned about at, at second is, um, is the future of our students. That would be crazy. 
If you've been here long enough, you, you've probably heard Pastor Bob or, or Jonathan saying it. We don't believe that the students or the, even the kids in our Sunday schools are the church of tomorrow. We don't believe that. We believe they're the church of today. We believe they're the church of today. We honestly believe that the students here in this youth group can be affected for the kingdom of God today. That they can go out into their communities, their schools, their towns, cities, states, and even the country and the world. And they can literally change the world with the grace of God on their side. That they can go out and be effective and make a difference in this world and then in the life after this. That what they are, we are doing on a Wednesday night is not just playing games, having fun, and listening to a good message. That we are literally training up people to be a difference in this world through the grace of God. It is more than just a glorified babysitting position. Although with all of those things that we want them to strive for, we want them to go and accomplish things for the work of God, there are also, as this verse says, waves and confusion of life that comes up at people, at, especially at these students. And sometimes we think of these students like, okay, they're kids. How much can they really get? Parents, how many of you have been in here before, even students who are sitting in here, get the questions, what am I going to do after, or after high school? What college, what career am I going to take? God, where are your next steps for me right now? What does your future hold for me? Where do you want me to go from here? And those are tough questions. Those are questions that are coming at them at a very young age. We have, I, I know there's one kid in our youth group, he's in eighth grade, eighth grade, concerned about college already. Like, dude, I was playing Xbox all day when I was in, when I was in that grade. No, no way. But these questions are coming at them. And then even deeper questions start to come at them. Even deeper doubts and struggles and real life opportunities or struggles come at them. Real life is happening for them right now. Questions come at us like, why am I so alone in my school? Why does nobody talk to me? Why are my parents divorcing or separating? God, where were you when my mom died? God, why do you seem to allow evil to flourish in this broken world when you should be in control of it? God, why do the people I love the most get sick and have diseases that can't be cured? I'm telling you guys, these are real life questions that are happening to our students right now. Waves of life are coming at, coming at these students, and they're dealing with, with problems and questions that nobody should have to deal with, let alone people who are trying to navigate high school and middle school. Real life is happening for them right now. And though we'll never claim we know the answers to all these questions, we just don't know sometimes. We don't know the plans that God has. has. Sometimes we don't know the reasons why things happen. We don't know. Um, but we do know that there is a God that loves them more than anything they could ever even imagine or think of. And there is a God that will walk through them during those hard times that it doesn't matter what you've done, what you've said, or what's going to happen in your life. The circumstances that come, the places you were born, or the schools you are in, there, are, there is a God who will walk alongside you in that dark time and not only that that there's a God that died for you and took the sins of you on the cross paid your debt and then not only that that he wants to spend for an eternity with you loving you for the rest of your life that there's a God no matter what that loves them yeah. <clears throat> we know that there can be hope healing in this life and the next when we are anchored to Christ, but only when we are truly anchored to the grace, truth, and love of Christ. So a second, just being a, a babysitting program where we can have a good time. I'm not going to lie. We have a good time at second. It's a lot of fun. We play some fun games. <laughs> but it's so much more than that. We can honestly say that we're trying our best to lead these students to effectively change the world for the grace of God today but only when we are anchored in the person and work of Jesus Christ. This is what second is all about. This is what we're doing here. We are investing into the church of today. I'm going to bow our head. We're going to close real quick in a prayer. I'll have the, the worship team come back up, and we're going to pray and thank God for today. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for, for the day you've given us and for these students that came out just to, to lead worship, to greet at the doors, hand out communion, and, uh, and just speak today. We thank you for their courage and their strength that you have given them, and we understand that nothing that we have done or do is on our own strength that you are with us. Lord, I pray that you continue to give them that strength as the years go on and as the struggles come and as they question whether or not it's worth it. Lord, please be with us today, and I pray that we can just praise you. No matter how old or young we are, that we can praise you and know that we are all striving to reach this world, a lost world for you, Lord, in your name.